Hey guys, you have no idea how excited I am for this video because what we're analyzing today is the video released by Jubilee with Myron from, Fresh, from the Fresh and Fit podcast on there. And it's between people who are overweight, we're going to call them fat or obese, and people who are in shape. Looks like from the thumbnail that it's only men who are in shape. Guys, there's so much I want to say about this. I have not seen this video yet. I haven't even seen a single minute of it. So I'm expecting greatness. I don't know what, what's going to happen here. But what is, I think, clear just from the architecture of denying reality insofar as you say that being fat is, a, is acceptable is that this isn't really a conversation just about being in shape versus overweight, which is the reason why I'm excited to analyze this because – What's going to be happening here is going to be the defense of denying objective frameworks in the ideology of resentment for accountability pertaining to the individual. And that is uniquely leftist, which is the reason why, sort of instinctually, I would say, the left has associated going to the gym and men being interested or even obsessed with physical fitness, with being on the far right. And I wouldn't say that it's because that's true. I would say it's because they associate being disheveled, disordered, and visibly falling apart with being on the left. I saw a post on X just recently that was a historical recount of Marx himself saying that he was covered in boils, um, that he hardly ever bathed, that he was unkempt, that he smelled bad. And that's the head honcho of leftism, quite literally. The person who birthed Marxist resentment. That person was fat. That person was overweight. He was unkept. And so that rejection of order is very similar to the rejection of individuality and, and the accountability to acknowledge and adhere to objective reality that comes from individual identity. Do you think just being in a fat body and being in the public space encourages obesity? Yes. Shame is what led me to an eating disorder. <laughs> okay, we're obviously watching the highlights at the start. I have not seen even a second of this video yet, so this is going to be incredible. This is going to be incredible. Oh my gosh, losers denying accountability versus winners holding them accountable. Best thing ever. When that, what though? we're looking for is Whose fault stability. Is that? That's your it's, fault. It's See, the problem is that you're a professional victim. Would you agree, like, looking at his physique? Like, he's at a perfectly, I would say, maybe healthy. No. Think? He's definitely overweight, definitely obese. You can see them getting triggered at just being judged there. Look at him. He's like, how dare you judge me? But he can't do anything because men. And I love that most of the people in this panel, I, I think they're, they're all men. I couldn't uh, quite see them all. I think they're all men, which means that they understand that they are in a competition hierarchy involuntarily. Whether they like it or not, they are in competition with other men. And these men that are embodying a higher degree of physical impressiveness are showing something that cannot be argued with. Sorry, I, I just involuntarily just started laughing when I saw these people. Because it, it went from, you know, excellence to whatever this is. Bro. Oh my gosh, it's so brutal. It's like, it's like the people that get upset at um, Andrew Tate when he stands next to cars that cost more money than they make in their lifetime. And they just get, they just get upset. Because they know men want to be like that instead of like them. My name's John. So really what this is, is men who are interested in fitness and excellence versus men who are professionally upset at that they're judged. I host the Radical Empathy podcast. I used to direct episodes. No one cares. I have felt disgusted looking at a fat body. Can our agreeers please step forward? <laughs> My, Myron goes forward. <laughs> or feels compelled to start us off. Well, it's unacceptable to be fat. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is so good. Okay, <laughs> that's a great start. I mean, I, I, I know why you say that, but it's one of those things where, do you know why you're saying that? Yes, because I've been fat before and I lost the weight. Well, me too. I've been fat my whole life. I've been way skinny. Say that you're still fat. Tell him. Here than I am now, and I've been way heavier than I am now. Was I less valuable at one point in there? You are a worse version of yourself. Well, I mean, you can make an argument that you, you're less valuable when you're fatter because you drain resources, but that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, I mean, in general, being fat is unacceptable because you control every single morsel of food that goes into your mouth. Okay. Um, it shows a lack of discipline. It shows a lack of character. It shows a lack of temperance. And uh, when you're fat, it just it's an outward manifestation of your inadequacies. When I see somebody who's five or 600 pounds, all I can think of is why do they care so little about their health that they can do this, allow themselves to gain that much weight? Okay, so this is um, 
obviously there's gonna be a lot of hilarious moments in this video, I can already tell, but one important thing to, to take note of, you know, for the freak losers who put forward, you know, bad faith arguments because they aren't interested in ideas and they've been trained to reject coherent systems their entire life. What they would say is, why do you care what other people think of you? This is the loser's way out. This is the loser argument because they feign bravery. The bravery being, I don't care what other people think of me when it's never about what other people think of you. Being in excellent physical condition is simply acknowledging yourself as an individual and then being the best version of yourself. Is the best version of yourself being obese or ultra in shape, poor or successful, ignored by women or adored by women? And these simple logical frameworks enrage everybody, including trad cons, people on the right who are old boomers or can't accept that they are losers in comparison to the people that are leading men these days, like Andrew Tate, etc. It is a simple question of what is the best version of yourself? It has nothing to do with what other people think of you. That's a secondary derivation analysis. Life, I just can't imagine not wanting to live that badly. I understand that. No, it's, um, I've definitely felt- dis <laughs> well, Again, we're looking at winners and losers. Disgusted looking at my own body. And, and, the, and the denial here is going to be, but then I realized that it's better to be a victim because I can garner counterfeit virtue rather than taking on the responsibility of bettering myself. Looking at other fat bodies in my life. A lot of the disgust- You can I, tell he's a liberal. I felt looking at people was me feeling disgusted with myself and then projecting that feeling onto other people. And I don't think anyone on either side will- Yeah, look, you, you, see, you see winners staring at this guy like, are you really trying to say that you think we're disgusted with ourselves? We are literally better than you in this domain that we are here to sit down about. So you see, it's, it's, it's fantastic. This would be like Donald Trump, right? A billionaire sitting down with a loser on the left who can barely get out of bed and feed themselves and saying, so what is your critique of me? And then they, they just get reminded in every single way that they're worse than this guy. They can't even look him in the eye. I'll disagree that health is important. I know that my own mental health was way worse when I was spending every fixate of my life trying to get smaller. And you were never, you were never trying to spend every single moment of your life be, trying to be better. Because if you were, then you would be better. Also notice how he said smaller and not fitter, another coping mechanism for his failure. Trying to be thinner. I don't think there's anyone that can look at somebody five, 600, 700 pounds and not think, Wow, what have they done? And not be discussed. Like, how can you not? I just can't understand. You can't nobody assume that everyone that. has the same opinion, though, because unfortunately, some the people. Morally relativistic, low IQ person. Yeah. Have, you know, there's no way to say that you know Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime isn't in better physical condition than an obese woman that weighs 600 pounds because they're equivalent. Marxism, in its alignment with postmodernism, disputes reality because reality is offensive and oppressive to an ideology that says we construct reality. Emotional stuff that happened, um, traumatic stuff that's happened, so you can't discount and just say, oh, Whoa, because man. they're... Yeah, exactly. I'm so glad that they're, they're just gonna, Myron's gonna be brutal with these people because it's like, yeah, you're making excuses. Bet. Oh, man. Like, it, there's no one, way... No one cares, exactly. ...worse stuff going out in the world versus Absolutely. people saying, oh my God, I'm sad, I'm gonna eat some ice cream. It's like, no, dude, it's like, you're fat, you made that decision, you live in the best country ever. If you live in a civilized first world country where you have electricity, internet power, etc., you deserve to be bullied. It's ridiculous to me that we have all these fat people running around. Meanwhile, people Dude, are being- Dude, look how deformed this person is. Look how deformed. Being bombed in Gaza, it's ridiculous. We are so privileged here in the United States and in the West in general. When I see a fat person, I'm like, wow, you got the gift of life. You got the gift of being in a developed country and you're a fat POS talking about body positivity on TikTok. What the hell is going but now on Now you're here? segmenting though, because not everyone thinks like that. What do you no, we need to bring shaming back. Okay. We, we, need to bring, we need to bring shaming back in so many other regards besides obesity. We need to do it with sluts. We need to shame, do shame Jesus. fat people. We need to shame everybody. When they fuck up. <laughs> because shame, shame is- Look how the deformed people are uncomfortable with reality. It's been one of the strongest defenses against degeneracy and human fuck ups. You the fact that billionaire alpha males exist enrage loser women who can't stand masculinity. You see what I'm saying? A personal experience you wanted to share. You said you used to be overweight. Now you're oh, not. yeah. So I did an experiment back in like 2015. So we see, we know that the person, I'm just going to acknowledge that the moderator, oh, I have a compassion podcast. <laughs> he's looking for any way to demonize the identity, make it in the image of the ideology of Marxism to discount the coherent arguments Myron's making. He will fail, of course. Where I like bulked for like almost two years and I got up to like 250 pounds, and then I dieted down. It took me about seven months. I systematically did it, controlled my calories, tracked my macros, tracked my protein, carbs, fats, and uh, 
systematically lost, lost one to two pounds per week. So you, you chose to gain right. up to 250. Yeah, you so were I've, naturally been on, skinny I've been in all sports. Yeah. Like, I'm naturally skinny. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to get fat as an experiment. Yeah. Did it. And then I was like, all right, now I'm going to lose the weight. And then all I did was just track my calories, ate the same food every single day. Yeah. Went to the gym four or five times a week. And everything was controlled and it got done. Was it monotonous? Of course. Was it boring? Oh, yeah, of yeah. I, I agree with you there. I am naturally this way. This. <laughs> Pointing at yourself and be like, I am naturally a loser. <laughs> Bro, these people are so stupid. This is with working out four or five times That's a week. That's not true. This is a hundred percent true, can't. bro. No, bro. No, I'm it's, it's, it's not. This it's is it's not natural out. at all. Because at the end of the day, if you don't lose weight, by this guy's not arguing with him. If he actually worked out five times a week, he would be arguing with him right now. Because that that's that you can take a lot of pride in that. That's a lot of work. But he, this guy, doesn't work out five times a week. He's he just lied. Definition: You're not in a calorie deficit. If you're not in a calorie deficit, then you're gonna either maintain or gain weight. And that's I the problem: you. is that people and, don't and, track their calories. And that's true, but. People burn at their resting metabolic rate a different set of calories. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Let's not get too granular it's right now. Oh my God, facts are granular. Listen to my compassion podcast. <laughs> and it's going to be yeah. one of those episodes, right? <laughs> let's bring in the pullback on the calories and knowledge you had. The reason why I use that example is that you can get fat and lose the weight if you know what you're doing and you have the knowledge and everything else like that. It's just about consistency over time. So it's like, I look so, at it boy, like. Let me cut you off because here's one thing that you just said. Yeah. You had the tools, so there's people. You had the tools. You could use a calculator and numbers. Oh, you could read the English language and see what it says on the microwavable food. People that don't have the tools that you've passed judgment on, and you have failed to realize that with the tools, people are very much capable of achieving amazing things. But okay, no, wrong. The internet is literally free. Everybody has the tools, but people fail. The left likes to pretend like we're all blank slate, like we're all blank slates, and we're equally predisposed. Not true. Let's talk about said No, tools hold on, I'm not done. Why you don't you cut me off? I'm not done. Remember? And I stood over there and I listened to you, and I was like, it's a, it's a ton of bullshit too. Uh, sure. But we're gonna address this, right? Yeah. You are passing judgment on people who lack the tools to do what it is that they need to do to get. There are multitudes of factors. They will argue, please let there be a reason for me to be a loser. Oh my gosh, degeneracy is good. That weighs his fats bulging out of his pants. Oh, nothing about. Now, on the flip side, what if I turned around and I did the same thing to you? You're talking about how fit and stuff that you are, but you're over there and you're smallest compared to these other guys. The difference is that Myron engages in objective reality and doesn't have a problem admitting that he's improving. You, on the other hand, are saying you don't want to improve. You're making excuses. Leftism is a loser mentality, bro. That's, so that's, how does that feel if someone comes up and they start shaming you for size? Like, come on. I'm, I'm not offended. It's fine. He's emotional. No, it goes, and it goes fine. in every direction. He's obviously very triggered. Oh, but I'm yeah, so triggered. let's talk about, let's hit the first part, tools. What are the tools? The tools are simply knowledge, which you can get for free on the internet. If you have the ability and the discipline to go out there and get the knowledge, then you're going to lose weight. It's uh, just that uh, simple. Uh, it's uh, just uh, that uh, people want to always make excuses for why, oh, my feelings. Oh, I don't know what, if you don't know what people are going through, blah, blah, blah. No. You can watch your calories, you can go to the gym, you have time to do it, people just like to make excuses. I, I don't think anyone's- They literally eat too much. That is quite, if you are in a caloric deficit, you lose weight. Debating that weight loss is impossible here. I think the question is, why do you hate fat people that you feel the disgust toward? Leftists are actually completely dishonest people. There is no, there is, that is blatantly incoherent. They have hijacked the moral high ground by saying, if you are not part of my ideology, you are automatically a bad person. And then you get incoherent statements like this. Well, like I said before, it's a culmination of a bunch of bad decisions. I'm not gonna go ahead and give the same level of respect to someone who's a fat ass, to someone that has worked really hard and diligently on their physique because your body's outward manifestations so more of decisions. There's more factors to a human being than their body. Well, I'm, you could judge a lot just off of someone's physique. You'd be like, okay, well, this guy is lazy. And that's personified through their physique. It's the truth. And I would notice how the IQs are lower. It's not just the physiques. The ability to think is inferior. The ability to engage with reality is worse. The emotionality is higher on this side. As men, these all go under the category of losers. The best part, and what's funny is, you see the way they're dressing. 
they're trying to hide the fact that they're fat, but you still see the fat bulging out of their pants. Reality, because it's objective, because you can see the difference between muscles, you can see the fact that they can't make eye contact, you can see the fact that they're emotional, you can hear the fact that their IQs are lower when they speak. All of this is enraging to those that find objective reality offensive, which is everybody on the left. Never look at someone and show disgust towards them. I mean, I think I would respect, like you said. I mean, you don't respect everyone, like you said, but um, I think- Respect is earned. <laughs> I, I mean, it is earned, but I mean, I think at a humane level, we can learn to appreciate each other's differences. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> no, we should not appreciate each other's differences if the differences are degenerate. I don't know if like disgust would be the right word, right? I know. Greg, I, Greg mentioned some impl health implications with being overweight yeah. and obese. Yeah. I think con being concerned might be a, a better. That's the word I was going to go better for. Word, like but. I can show I can show concern for someone, for the way that they are, but I would never look at what they're afraid of is judgment. Someone and say like feel. I don't think I can choose like oh I just am not. It would be sitting here and lying. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I'm always going to be honest with people. I'm disgusted. This is just how I feel. The thing is, when you see a fat person, the reason why it's disgusting and the reason why there's so much pushback on this whole body positivity and people make fun of Lizzo, rightfully so, by the way, is because it's unattractive, it's unhealthy. Until we had this woke era, they used to put like models and attractive people. This is so fantastic. Oh my gosh, we've made it. Guys, we are now on Jubilee, representing reality, when years and years ago, they didn't have any of this. They've had to conform to objective reality. Their delusion is being exposed. They are revealed as frauds. The fact that we can even use the word woke to condemn now versus five years ago, oh my gosh, bro. This is, this is a cultural shift. On the cover of magazines that were in shape. Why? So that people can aspire to look like that. And it's healthy and it looks better in general. You look good, feel good. But when you're fat, it says a lot about you. People aren't gonna sit there and be like, hmm, let me see if he's a good person. No, they're just gonna assume that you're lazy, which you are, by the way, when you're fat. And you don't have discipline, which you are. <laughs> Lazy. Let's go. Yes. So they're just gonna assume off of what they see. That's the world they live in. I love how you just you you stated a, a ton of assumptions. You didn't state not one. F <laughs> Oh my gosh, reality is assumptions, opinions are, <laughs> oh my gosh, facts are opinions. This is, this mimics, very interestingly, the degenerate anti-reality cognitively destroyed mental state of the women that go on Myron's podcast. All degenerates, all deformities, all people who deny reality are triggered by objective standards. Fact. Like I said before, unfortunately, human beings judge a book by its cover. It's just the world that we live in. Fat people, people that, you know, identify as 97 genders, whatever, they expect us to change our worldview for them, and that's just not how the world works. Like, well, it's been that way, it's always gonna be that way. Worldview. That's right, we, I think, but I don't <laughs> It's just the one that we're in, like, people. Oh my gosh, dude, this fucking soy moderator. <laughs> We've made it. Yes, let's go. Jubilee is forced to listen to reality, and they can't edit this out without being too embarrassed. Oh, gonna, so yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's different, yeah. My bad. Now let's reset. Jacked men are more attractive than fat men. If they could have done this over, I mean, Myron obviously brought the views, right? But if they could have done this over, there's no way they would have brought Myron back on <laughs> because this invalidates, this invalidates so much of what Jubilee's about. They are woke to the gills. Well, the agreeers, please step forward. And they're getting owned, it's so good. Are more attractive than fat men. By the way, this is a fantastic question. I gotta, I gotta acknowledge that. It has an objective answer. Both men and women are attracted to fit people and they are unattracted to overweight people. And this goes, this goes both ways. When a woman is overweight, she is basically, she's basically a third class citizen to most men in terms of the dating pool. And it doesn't matter what your eenty weenty feelings feel about it. That is literally just what men are attracted to. Women as well are not attracted to fat slobs. They're attracted to men who have their life together, but it's more complex because when, they, when a woman looks at a man who is, let's say, physically ultra in shape, she sees more than just the fact that he's strong. She sees the fact that he has discipline, that he can master reality. She sees that he can take care of her, etc. She sees embodied proof of his ability in multiple facets of life. Whereas for men to women, it's more one-dimensional. If she's overweight, she's just not attractive at all. How come there's four guys over there? <laughs> All right, we're, so we're living in a bizarre world where people don't see the truth. Like, how is it possible that they're thinking, no, being obese and- Because Marxism requires people to deny objective reality in order to be good people. But I like the question. Unhealthy is more attractive than being fit and healthy. How is this, how is this possible? You want to, you, actually, you know what? This is precisely why a majority of women find the majority of men as unattractive. Because a lot of guys think this way. Oh, I'd just be a nice guy and girls are gonna like me. No, they're not. She's not gonna suck your dick with the same veracity when you're a fat as when you're in shape. She's just not. 
see, people don't understand that women are aroused by one thing and they're attracted by another thing. Women are attracted to, you know, a guy that's confident, ambitious, makes money, etc. By the way, two of these guys on this panel are both multimillionaires from this side. So again, we're dealing with winners and losers. And it's just, it's super interesting because even in this controlled environment, the fat slobs are, who are all men are forced to adhere to the dominance hierarchy and the competence hierarchy, which, which says they are like nothing compared to these men. True, of course, right? But they're aroused by guys that have soul tendencies, dark triad traits, etc., and guys that are physically in shape. So if you want to get the best of your woman, where she respects and admires you, while simultaneously being aroused by you so she doesn't cheat with, on you, you need to have it all. You're saying that's true for all women? A majority, a staggering majority of women. There might be 1% of the world that have, there's something wrong with them that might think that, yeah, you're 600 pounds, it's so hot, I love that, but. Yeah. The hot girls, girls that you actually want, they exercise their hypergamy to the highest degree and they want guys that are fit and have their money together, have their life together. I'm 48 years old, he's a lot younger than me, he's about a foot taller than me, but you can't compare, I'm an old man, I'm 48 years old. Like obviously height is a big component, so that, that you know, so it's not apple, you're comparing apples to oranges, but if you take the same guy, same height, etc. But one guy is fat, one guy is in good shape, she's always gonna go with the guy that's a better shape. Yeah, you, you, correct. You, you believe how they behave, that's, not what they that's say. That's a different episode. That's, that's all right, figure it out. Uh, <laughs> so, dude, we are living in an era where soy men <laughs> are the ones that aren't censored on YouTube. Look at this. They were, they were in the middle of a conversation. It could have gone somewhere. Oh my gosh, it's too offensive. No, no, we can't talk about that. Oh my God. I am a, a big and tall model by trade. That's what I do. I model clothing brands. I've modeled with major fashion houses. I've been on we the- know that, We know that clothing companies are hiring fat models to help people cope with their leftism. So I'm not surprised that he is employed as a model. There's a magazine. You mentioned before dad bod comments and whatnot and on social media. I was flabbergasted when I started how many people were commenting and DMing me and talking about how attractive I was, that it just kind of I don't know, showed me that attraction is a lot more subjective than I thought, and people have a much wider range of what they find attractive. Also go after what they think they can get. So if this guy is six foot five and extremely attractive, and it's like, well, I can't get that guy. I, I'm attracted to the 10 on 10 supermodel, but I'm not gonna get her, so I'll be happy with the 9.9 on 10. Just to be clear, are we speaking about women being attracted to men? It's not just about women. It's just about attraction. Uh, the, what is the most attractive, in your opinion, okay. physique? for a man. Okay, I'm speaking from like what women find attractive. So when I, when I, when I speak, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm anybody- I'm sexually fluid. So my <laughs> law- We know! Of attraction does not adhere to anyone's standards pretty- Right, right, the, the freaks always have to make it clear. Oh, I, I, I do not live in anyone else's standards. I, my ideology tells me that I, I, I have my own objective uh, parameters that I'm not held accountable to your parameters because then I would be judged. Attractive or politically correct things. Oh, he has a dad bod, he's nice, he's a good guy. The reality is that women don't respond well and favorably to these men. There's a reason why- Bro, I'm so glad they brought Myron on. This is fantastic. The world is going to witness this and the entire comments I've heard um, on X that the comments on this YouTube video are just people seething and coping. It's hilarious. Yeah, look, bro, everyone is just completely. <laughs> oh, they're, bro, they're losing their mind. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Reality is enraging to the freak shows, bro. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm so grateful that I, I'm so grateful that I've been saved from the fate of these reality deniers by Jordan Peterson when I was 16, bro. Nice guys finish last is a thing. It's because when you're too nice and you kind of bend to her will, etc. and girls aren't aroused by that. Girls don't want to say what they're really aroused by. Guys that are able to stand up to them. Guys that are able to tell them, well, that was a stupid comment or hold them accountable for their stupidity when they do dumb things. This is what women find attractive because these are leadership traits. Have any of those things happened to you though? Well, I mean, I, I talk, I've talked to almost 3,000 women, and what I've come to realize from talking to all of them is that most of the time, you know, when they're in a comment section on TikTok, like, you're so handsome, blah, 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 will they actually go on a date and have sex with that guy? Probably not, but they say that because it's politically correct and- There it is, yes. The culture is shifting, but it's more complex than just, okay, people are starting to agree with what reality has to offer. The stratification is increasing such that the people that are enraged by reality are now on the other side of what I'm calling the reality wall. Anything that is objectively true, they are enraged by. Anything that engages in objective premises or processes, like rationality itself or reason, are automatically demonized. So reality is winning out, but there are but the divide is still increasing. When I say reality is winning out, reality always wins. But what I'm talking about specifically is the people who are embodying reality are becoming less afraid to speak out. 
to the point where there are such large audiences of men wanting this that they bring on Myron to a podcast that is extremely woke, extremely um, social justice, like Jubilee, because they know it brings the views. Because they know men are no longer afraid to say, you're not going to have control. The freaks and deformities are not going to have control over the future of humanity. We're not going to invert the competence hierarchies in order to say the most deformed, the most weak are the best people. It's just lazy thinking. Women tend to not want to be adversarial. They're going to say what well, sounds good. But what they're actually aroused by are two different things. But they're yeah. married to those guys. Yeah, that was kind of what I was most getting to. Most often they're married I'm to married. And they're marriage cheating. is a failed institution in the West. And this is why most men get uh, divorced by women. This is why they get destroyed in the divorce courts. This is why women overwhelmingly initiated the divorce rates in America. 80% are initiated by women. Because we sit here and we lie. and we Bro, you see the difference between... Men who are equipped with reality and those who are repeating leftist hive mind statements. Eviscerated nonstop. And fantastic. Believe what women say they're, they're actually attracted to. No, well, let's attracted let's to go back to attraction not. for a second, though, because I'm married. Sure. I have a child. Cool. I have a beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. I was this size the entire process through. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you're an average guy? I would say that you're I'm bigger tall, than average. Yeah, you're not an average guy. And, and a model you're, you're not for, an guy. for being slightly overweight. I wasn't a model when I started But dating you are my a wife. very good looking, tall, I was a big guy who's on whatever. magazine covers. So but out of the think, million think, guys but, overweight, you're at you're the not top. Not they already acknowledge that status is very important to women. So his argument is invalidated. Guys, I mean, well, society definitely finds jack guys more attractive. But I disagreed with the statement. They admit to your face that they can't think. I found that a statement about objective statistics didn't pertain to an anecdotal experience. We have to start teaching people how to deal with ideas. Otherwise, you get people confessing in front of millions that they don't know how to think, and then you have you know, overweight, degenerate, single women triggered by reality as they're buying cat food in the comments section saying the opposite of reality. Again, you see that divide increasing of people who are able to think individuals, bettering themselves, interested in truth, engaging and acknowledging the objective world, and then people on the other side of the reality wall.